When women gained the right to vote, they did not enter into a perfect system. Many women were excluded from voting rights. Native Americans, Japanese and Chinese women, African American women, many mixed race women. But as the decades passed, many of those obvious barriers fell. And a special thanks today to the faculty and students of Western Oregon University for their respect and research of that history, that history of the women's vote in our state, in our country. Thanks to them, we will all now be better informed voters. Votes for women! Fourteen wonderful honor students participated in this documents project. They all did research in the, about the history of women's suffrage nationally, internationally, and also in Oregon. Then we worked with our community partner, the Oregon Women's History Consortium, so that they're posted on that website. And a really great thing that the students did was to present their research at an evening at the Oregon State Capitol. So I really enjoyed speaking to people at the Capitol building during the event because it really helped me understand my own project further. What I learned from my research that I didn't know before was that Dr. Esther Paul Lovejoy actually wasn't a prohibitionist, she was a Democrat. I also learned that there was a prohibitionist party in itself. What I will take away from this project is that women's suffrage was not an easy um, achievement. It was a long battle that women really fought to achieve and that women should not take their voting rights lightly. I learned how quickly women in Oregon actually used their role and ability to vote and run for office and do a lot of activist work and really make change very quickly. We researched uh, newspaper articles from the 1920s and I really had no idea that you could do things like keyword searching from you know century old newspaper articles. My research project looked at extracurricular activities and clubs at the Oregon Normal School, which was the name for Western Oregon University back when it was a teacher training school. And I specifically looked at how these uh, extracurricular activities and clubs helped young women develop skills that they would need to be active participants in society. Something that I learned from my research that was really interesting was kind of this transformation that these girls underwent while they were at school. They gained this skill and experience that allowed them to really have poise in those situations and make a difference for society. For my research project, I looked into what Latino women were doing in Oregon in the early 1900s, specifically with the hope of finding out if they were involved in the suffrage movement. I learned what American people thought about Mexican women and Mexican people in general, and then I also learned what newspaper columnists thought was worth writing about. So out of the research that I did, my favorite article, it was titled The Mexican Senorita, and it was just about like the classic Mexican girl and how she was different from like a classic American girl. And it really highlighted um, the perspective that the editorial had about Mexican women. Projects like this allow so us to see how young people become young professionals and take on the responsibilities of becoming tomorrow's leaders today. I'd like us to also take time to envision for ourselves what kind of society can be created through robust, engaged, nonviolent exercise of the vote. Those visions are worth struggling and voting for today. It is kind of remarkable to think it was 98 years. It's only been 98 years ago that the idea of women voting meant for some of its opponents nothing less than the moral collapse of the nation, right? There was a price that was paid that what we're standing here to talk about tonight, 2020, and that whole ratification, and how important that was, that has benefited all of us who are sitting here. The community collaboration with all of the other historians and the political leaders around Oregon was really important because for me it just made me so much more passionate about my study that they were interested in it. Community research now and hopefully in the future will continue to be the backbone of what higher education is about. What we see is when you take on responsibility for not only working with others on a project but working 
with the community, you erase the boundaries that have historically been there between the so-called town and gown division. And those have always been false, always been fabricated, and what's so wonderful is to see how today's youth have never really perceived that division. And this is lively, vital work for them and for us. The students also participated in interviews with historians and current women leaders about the importance of the vote. When we went to the Capitol building, I was able to see some of the graduates from Western and specifically the Honors Program who work at the Capitol building. So it was as though the, the alumni in the past met the students who were going to be them in the future to provide this continuity between the students of the past and, and, and current. And it was one of the triumphant experiences that we've had in Honors five years ago and also today.